really, really want to say uh, thanks to our house co-chair, Representative Emanuel Cleaver, for joining us via Zoom. Uh, hopefully, I, presumably you're back in your district, sir, uh, having a great time and meeting with lots <laughs> of constituents and telling them about all the great work you're doing here in DC. Um, some of your staff is here in the room. I'm not sure you can see them on the video, but thank you so much for being willing to Zoom in with us today. I'll turn it over to you uh, and uh, looking forward to hearing your remarks. All right, I, um, uh, I'll be quick. I think this is, uh, I've spread this down to about 45 minutes. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll, if you'll, uh, I'll take a, a, breath, a breather at uh, 35 after I speak to 35 um, minutes. And then I'll go on through uh, to my full 45 minutes plus my 15 minute closing. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, thank all of you for uh, not just being there or being here, <clears throat> but uh, for, for what you do. And uh, we, we are right now, I think, uh, in a phase where uh, we might be able, if we continue to work hard and, and, and continue to, to talk, uh, that we can uh, maybe make some changes now. Uh, as, as I think this group would know, we just experienced uh, uh, July 22nd as the hottest day ever recorded. The hottest day ever recorded. And yet I have some colleagues, they're good people, the Lord loves them, they take care of their lawns and, and feed their animals and so forth. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, they have not come to the realization uh, that... Um, you know, we have, we have all uh, responsibility. <clears throat> the earth is, the, in, my, in my real life as a United Methodist pastor, uh, four years in seminary after college, uh, I, I, I have to say that one of the, the, the things that should push some of us is the, work, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, meaning that uh, at best uh, we are uh, renters. Um, and <clears throat> our rent is to take care of the a beautiful world that, that, that God has, has given us. Uh, as, as we all know, the, the challenging uh, time for reducing carbon emissions is now. <clears throat> and um, it's both uh, uh, an environmental uh, imperative from my uh, perspective, uh, but it is also an economic opportunity. And that's where I have to uh, praise my uh, president, uh, Joe Biden. I'm not going to do a political speech. Don't worry. Uh, I do have one on my desk, but I'm not going to use that one. Um, but but I have to say that the, the president uh, has, in fact, created, I think, for the first time in our history, uh, a, a picture of the federal government trying uh, to respect the environment and to reverse a lot of the damage that's already been that has already been uh, done. Uh, and so, uh, in doing that, uh, he has created all of these uh, 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 economic opportunities, this, this vision uh, of uh, the, the world uh, being turned into what God uh, intended, uh, means that we all have to do our part, and it also uh, means that we have to have some other incentives, because we're humans and we, enter, we, we are weird animals. Um, but... It, there is a, a, a strong uh, economic opportunity, and uh, I, I think, from my perspective, this uh, commitment uh, uh, to, to this cause, uh, which you also have, is rooted in the belief that protecting our planet <clears throat> should go hand in hand with fostering economic growth and ensuring uh, well-being for for our families, uh, and in investing in energy efficient technologies and renewable uh, energy sources uh, represents one of the most effective strategies. And uh, I can't tell you uh, how important that is. And as each day goes by, that is going to become more and more uh, significant. Uh, and, and moreover, uh, transitioning to clean energy uh, is such an economic engine that we're going to end up <clears throat> with new 
jobs being created <clears throat> all over uh, the United States. Uh, and uh, our, our whole economy is right now on the cusp of, of, of a transition. Now, uh, in our transitions, there are people who, who refuse to go. I mean, the, the, you know, the, uh, I call them, uh, I don't like to call people names, but uh, if, uh, you know, I call them the, the troglodytic squad, uh, and, uh, and, and they are uh, good people, uh, but they want us to live back during the uh, Beaver Cleaver days of the 1950s, uh, and Beaver Cleaver and I are not related, uh, but uh, I, I, I do think that his era uh, represents uh, something to some people that's probably not, not accurate, but they want to go back. And uh, it, it comes right down to this. Uh, we have to have a focus on our communities. Uh, we have to focus on individuals and families <clears throat> and showing them how to navigate and, and um, establish climate conscious policies in our communities to, to protect and preserve these communities. Um, I, I used to live in public housing. I think there are four of us in Congress who actually lived in public housing. Uh, and uh, the temperature in public housing uh, is on average three degrees, uh, three to five degrees warmer than it is uh, any place else. Uh, uh, now, the reason I'm sharing that with you uh, is that uh, on the, this, this little ball that's rolling around in this uh, galaxy is our home, uh, and we don't have uh, the, the respect for it that we do. So we put the poorest people in, in places, uh, and then we put uh, we build an oven around them. And when you start putting people, have people living in areas uh, that are concrete, very few trees, very little vegetation at all, uh, then you, you're, you're going to find that the temperature difference between that spot in urban, usually in urban America, uh, and, the, and the suburban areas. Uh, and so uh, it is an issue that everybody uh, should be concerned about. <clears throat> and I keep going back to the fact that, uh, that, 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 that if you don't even like, uh, you know, for, for us to hear people talking about, uh, you know, the environment, just think economic opportunity. Because most of the problems that have been created will have to be addressed, and uh, to have it addressed, there's going to be a whole, in many cases, there's going to be a whole new world uh, created. Uh, for example, in Missouri, we're trying to do a lot of projects here. We have, we've, we've created what we're calling a, 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 an, an environmental corridor, corridor running from Independence, Missouri, uh, into Kansas City. Now, those Independence uh, is, is the home of Harry Truman. Uh, and you, you never know when you're in Kansas City and, and independent at, at a certain point. So it, it's it's close. So we, we're, we're doing things with those uh, two communities, bridging those two communities together, having projects uh, together. For example, we've gotten about 10 EV buses. Uh, and when you get an EV bus, uh, you know, the maintenance is, is obviously not as great as it is uh, on, on an old uh, diesel uh, uh, gas guzzling bus. Uh, but uh, there were, when we started, no uh, mechanics in the largest city in the state of Missouri. Not one single mechanic to work on those buses that uh, we, we've been able to get uh, through the Department of Transportation. Uh, and so, uh, so the, the younger people are going to see people who, who, who go to training, go to schools to be trained uh, just to work on electric vehicles. Uh, there is an economic opportunity in every single thing that we need to do to, to uh, make the environment uh, better. Uh, we are uh, uh, creating a, an opportunity up and down the road. We have all these uh, 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 spots around Missouri uh, where we have to uh, you know, have fuel, which is electricity. And so um, uh, that those uh, will have to be installed. And then when something breaks down, uh, somebody will have to repair them. A whole new industry around uh, charging stations. 
a whole new industry around uh, re repair <clears throat> and replacement. And so I I'm excited about the possibilities. Um, and and I, I think that uh, you are, uh, you know, right on the uh, cutting edge of, of, of what we're talking about. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, over the next couple of years, uh, we will actually have people working around the country uh, in some of these positions. St installing, for example, uh, which is what we're also doing here, uh, solar panels on homes. And that gets organized, organized labor involved, and they love it. So you got the, uh, I, uh, the, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW, uh, they, they, they work with, on, on the project, and then you have the laborers. So the, the laborers uh, bring the panels, uh, they, they, they uh, can install the panels uh, on, uh, on the rooftops, but then the IBEW comes in and does the connection. And so you got two labor unions, two separate labor unions, who I was with uh, the presidents of both of them yesterday, and I, and I can tell you they are, they are excited about the fi fact that they had that, that they have now built in Kansas City. You're welcome to come in and see it, uh, and, and and but they built this whole training center just to accommodate all the solar panels we're going to uh, install on on this corridor. So I'm, I'm going too long. But I, uh, what I wanted to make sure that I, I, I let you know is that this is not some theory anymore. It's real. It's, it's very real. And I would invite you to come to Kansas City. Uh, most of you probably don't live in places where they have real barbecue. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we had it here. I, I haven't figured out a way to put solar panels on top of a barbecue pit. But we're working on things like that. <clears throat> so... I'm excited about what, what, what we're doing here. I'm excited about the fact that, that you are excited. And if we keep getting other people excited, we can change this planet. We can change the direction uh, that we've been traveling. I appreciate you uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to share some of my thoughts with you. And I look forward to working uh, with most of you uh, in days to come. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Representative Cleaver, uh, for joining us. You, um, I'm not sure you heard it, but there was a collective tummy growl when you mentioned Kansas City barbecue. Uh, it's getting close to lunchtime, so everyone, uh, you certainly hit the spot with that. Thank you so much, and also, like, I think you're the first member of Congress to zoom into an ESI event. It's usually in person or it's video, so you are blazing trails as well. And I'd um, like to also just say a quick thanks to you and your leadership, of course, but also your great staff, Christina and Fabiola, and the rest of the team. Uh, have been really, really great to work with. So we all wish you a great rest of your day. It looks like a beautiful day out there, and um, we'll uh, find some time to connect for sure next time you're in D.C. Yes, yeah, so those will be 104. Oof. All right. Well, it's nice on the inside. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. Great to see you. All right. Take care. Uh -huh. Blessings. Thank you.